Another feature that Paging Hardware enables is distributed shared memory. So imagine you have three machines. So we've got these three different machines and they have this unified view of this portion of their address space. So they see this portion, the same here and on this machine here and on this machine here. Now the actual memory is a smaller subset. This is amount that's stored on machine A. This is stored on machine B and this is stored on machine C. And yet we still have this shared view of the memory. And what happens is we use paging hardware to make it look like remote memory is local. So the idea is, let's say we look at machine A and look at its page table entry. Let's say for the second, these are just single pages to make life easier. So we'd have three page table entries. The first would have the physical page number there, and this would be present and writable. The second would be invalid, and the third would be invalid. So on machine A, if it tries to write this portion of the address space, it would be able to read and write to it. But if it tries to read or write to the B portion of the address space, it's invalid. So this would go in the kernel to the page fault handler. The page fault handler would look and would say, ah, I happen to know this page actually is located on B. I'm going to go ahead and send a network request for this data. So it would, it would virtually have a pointer across the network to B. What do we mean by that? We just mean that the kernel on A knows how to communicate with B and get this data, either read or write this data. So when it gets a page fault, it would go ahead and ask B, and it would either read or write a particular you know, byte or word, or more likely read or write a page at a time. So that we could have some batching. So it goes ahead and takes a page, creates a local version of the page, allows reading and writing to happen, and then we'll copy that page back, let's say. Or maybe it just does, who knows exactly how we're going to do that. Okay. But similarly, if A tries to read and write from C, that can cause the kernel to go ahead and do network communication with C to ask to read or write this data. Now this can get fairly elaborate, right? It could be that we're going to have the actual current contents of a page stored on one of these machines. If A is the one that's reading or writing to this address space, maybe the memory will actually migrate over to machine A, and A has ownership of that. And then B and C, if they want to read or write to B, will have to query and figure out who is the current owner and maybe go get that owner. So it's not unlike cache lines in a multiprocessor uh, where there are multiple, proce multiple processors all trying to have this shared understanding of what some values are. That's one use of paging hardware. This is not very common, but it's something that can be done and it would be really hard without it.